The time of the Arisen is upon us, and you have been chosen as the dragon's adversary. It's going to take a lot of adventuring to get to that point, though, as your character starts off imprisoned in a mine with no memory of how they came to be there in the first place. Don't worry, Arisen. We're here to help you land on your feet so you can tackle all of the dangers that lie ahead of you in Dragon's Dogma 2. Presented by the United States Air Force, where great starts happen, from launching a career and making lifelong friendships to becoming a better you. I've just got to take down a record of your name and face. Come on, step forward. When you begin your game, you'll need to make your Arisen. Once you've made your character look exactly how you like, you'll then choose your starting class, known as a vocation. You can choose between fighter, archer, mage, and thief. These are your classic fantasy classes, but in case you're not sure what to choose, here's a quick rundown. Fighters are great for charging forth into battle with a sword and shield in hand. They can do plenty of damage when up close, and their shield makes them the most defensive class to choose at the start. Block attacks and soak up damage for your team before striking the enemy when you find an opening. Archers wield bows and arrows from a distance to attack grounded and airborne foes alike. As with most characters that are not fighters or some of the advanced vocations, archers don't have the biggest health pool, so it's important to stay back and plink away from safety. Accurate archers can make the most of their skills to hit enemies in their weak spots in order to deal massive damage. Mages are the most support-like vocation you can find in the early game, as they start with a healing spell called Anodyne, which creates a healing aura for the whole team to use. They can also cast powerful magics with their staves, but be warned, these take time to cast. Knowing when and where to cast these spells can be the difference between winning or losing a fight. Thieves are the final starting vocation you can choose from. They're another melee build like the fighter class, but they excel in making quick strikes before dodging out of harm's way instead of blocking damage with a shield. If you enjoy climbing enemies or you want to zip around the battlefield, then Thief might be the right call for you. Welcome, Arisen. We pawns have long awaited your arrival. Once you've made your character and completed the opening mission, you'll soon be made to summon a pawn. Pawns are the characters that you'll bring along with you during your adventure, and you can create one exactly to your liking at the start of the game. While you can hire other pawns to fill out your group, be aware that the pawn you create will be with you 24-7 for the rest of the game. So choose the personality, vocation, and voice type of someone who you want to keep around. When you're out exploring, you can direct your pawns to do various things with the D-pad. The options you're given are go, help, wait, or to me. These directions do different things in different situations. In combat, for example, saying go will have your characters push forward ahead of you and act on their own terms. If your health is low and you say help, then your team will rush close to deal with your assailants and potentially heal you. You can also use these commands when you're out and about exploring. Whenever a pawn points out something in the world, like a natural resource or a ladder, you can choose Go to have them interact with whatever it is they mention. Getting proper rest is an important duty in its own right. Anytime you rest at an inn, you will hear about your pawn's adventures from when they were hired by other players to use in their own games. When they come back, they'll come bearing gifts and rift crystals. Rift crystals are great because they allow you to summon pawns that are a higher level than you. I pray my efforts aid your cause which makes them an even bigger help in tough fights. On that note, it pays to switch up your party's makeup every so often. Hired pawns won't level up alongside the player and always stay at the level they were when you hired them. While you might grow fond of your traveling companions, it's best to switch them out for more powerful pawns once you've increased a few levels so that you don't bring them into situations that they're ill-equipped to handle. You can do this at Riftstones or by talking to pawns that you happen across on your travels. I have a knack for gathering items and am ever on the hunt for new finds. When you start out, you'll only have the rags on your back that you were wearing in the mines, so it would do you well to find some new equipment. You won't have much money before you reach the capital, so you can either complete a side quest at the Border Watch outpost to gain some gold and buy some equipment, or you can talk to an innkeeper and change vocations. When you change your vocation, you'll get a complete set of starting equipment to use, and and the cost to swap vocations is relatively inexpensive. Just make sure to store any old equipment you can't use from your old vocation each time you swap. You can also do this at the end. I cannot wait to see your nimble blade work, master. This is also a great way to try a different vocation to the one that you started with if you feel like taking a different gameplay style for a spin. You level vocations up the more you use them, so it's good to pick one to focus on. But it can also be a good idea to try different ones just to see how they play. You can also level up your pawn's vocation skills or straight up change theirs while you're in here. 
Once you follow the main quest to the first proper town of Melv, there's a couple of things you should do. First, stop by the apothecary and chat with Flora. She needs to find a fruit roborant, which should be easy enough to make, if you don't already have one, by combining dried fruit with green warish. If not, you can also buy them from the apothecary inside. Here for some fruit roborant, are we? Hand it to her and she'll give you your first ring, which will give you a small boost to your health. Her grandfather will also offer you a discount at his own apothecary once you meet him in the capital city. Would you be willing to accompany me to the capital? After you spend time in Melv, head to the main gate to set out for Vernworth with Gregor. There will be a number of monster encampments that you will come across before you ultimately are faced with a Cyclops. <laughs> this creature is partially damaged by the rock slide it was buried under, but it is still a threat. If you want to make quick work of it, you can attack these rocks with ranged attacks or a thrown object to let loose a torrent of water to knock over the Cyclops, dramatically reducing its health and making the fight much easier. After this, you can ride in the Oxcart all the way to Vernworth. After a few cutscenes and a stroll about town, there is one thing that you absolutely must do. Located right next to the back entrance of the inn is a Port Crystal. These are landing spots that you can select whenever you choose to use a Fairy Stone from your inventory. But if you leave Vernworth without activating the Port Crystal, you won't be able to come back via fast travel. Look out for these crystals in any other major towns that you come across in your adventure. There's plenty for you to do in Vernworth, but we'd recommend that you prioritize the side quest Vocation Frustration if you're interested in discovering some brand new vocations. The Vocation Guild is struggling to sign new members up for their more advanced vocations because their weapon deliveries have been raided by goblins. After hearing about this from the Vocation Guild, talk to the weapon store owner to get the marker for the quest Vocation Frustration. Head to the marker to find a cave system teeming with these goblin thieves. Exploring these cave systems thoroughly will give you the chance to find a bunch of great rewards. And once you find the great sword and the archer staff, you can return to Vernworth and sign up for the brand new classes of warrior and sorcerer as your reward. Now you have even more vocational options for yourself and your pawns to choose from. From this moment forth, thou art risen. With these tips in mind, you won't be heartless for much longer. So go forth, Arisen, slay the dragon, and reclaim what is rightfully yours. For more on Dragon's Dogma 2, check out all of our guides and features, and of course, stay tuned to IGN.com.